Today, Pirates of the Caribbean is one of Disney's most iconic and well-known attractions. In fact, Pirates is so popular that the ride has managed to find its way into almost every Disney park around the world. However, there are still quite a few variations between all of them, most of which brought on by things like the differences in what countries they're in, as well as what time they were made, with the original first debuting in the late 1960s and the newest one only opening a few years back in 2016. But the most peculiar example of changes made from the original version can be found at the one at the Magic Kingdom, which despite only opening four years after the original was extremely different, actually featuring less scenes and switching out a few, with new ones entirely. So in this video we'll be going through the brief history of that ride, seeing what all was changed and hopefully why. When the first Pirates of the Caribbean was opened at Disneyland in 1968, the ride was almost instantly a classic. Its use of innovative technology when it came to the animatronics really managed to captivate its riders in a way that hadn't been done before, and also proved to be an extremely effective storytelling device that would later be used in many of their future attractions. So, when plans were finally announced not long after that for the all-new Disney World down in Florida, many assumed that like Disneyland's other popular attractions, Pirates would make its way there as well. But when the Magic Kingdom officially opened in 1971, the ride was nowhere to be found. Unbeknownst to parkgoers back then, Disney was actually in the process of creating another new attraction to take its place, a ride by the name of the Western River Expedition, which would have been a boat and dark ride hybrid, much like the original Pirates of the Caribbean. Because of the fact that the new project was being led by Imagineer Mark Davis, it was going to use a lot of the same technology and general scene ideas from Pirates, since he was the one who came up with many of the core concepts behind that ride. While there were still many large-scale changes between the two, especially when it came to theming, the Western River Expedition and Pirates were decidedly too similar, and the latter was cut during the planning stage for Magic Kingdom. However, when visitors began complaining that the much-anticipated Pirates of the Caribbean wasn't present at Disney World, Imagineers began to quickly develop one in order to placate those same guests. Despite that, the Western River Expedition was still the main attraction Davis's team was working on, and because of that, the new version of Pirates was created extremely quickly, with Imagineers spending less than a year on planning and actually beginning construction on the attraction just a few months after they started developing it. Because of this, Florida's version of Pirates was ready to go by 1973, only two years after the park itself was opened. When the new ride was officially unveiled on December 15th of that year, it saw a somewhat similar reaction to its Disneyland counterpart, with many of its riders impressed by the utilization of new animatronic technology. But when it came to people who had also been on the original, the new version didn't receive anywhere near as much praise, and was thought by many of them to actually be inferior to the older version. So, to really get an idea of why that sentiment was so commonplace, we're going to go through the new ride itself and see how it compares to the original. One of the first changes the attraction saw was its relocation within the park. While the original Pirates could be found within the New Orleans Square section of Disneyland, the Magic Kingdom's version was now in Adventureland. This change, mostly brought on by the lack of available space in the park's Liberty Square, meant that Pirates had to be moved to a different area. And because of the large vacant plot already set aside for the Western River Expedition, Imagineers were able to dip into that space somewhat and devote a piece of it to pirates. Because of the fact that the attraction was now in a completely new land, they also had the freedom of giving it an entirely new facade and queue. Now instead of the attraction being housed inside one of the buildings of the New Orleans Square, it was instead inside the Castillo del Moro, a winding Spanish fort that eventually takes you up to the loading area passing by cannons, guns, dungeons, and just about everything else you'd expect to find in a 17th century Spanish fort. Another interesting thing you'll find in the queue, and one of my favorite new elements, are the two skeleton prisoners playing chess. This is actually one of Mark Davis's new concepts made specifically for this ride. Originally, it was intended that the game was at a stalemate, where neither player could possibly win, adding to the humor that they both died waiting for the other to give up. However, since the pieces were never secured to the board itself, they have been moved around quite a lot over the years, and even today it's unlikely you'll ever see them in the correct spot. After going through the queue and reaching the load area, you'll notice a few more differences. The first of which being that the Magic Kingdom's loading area is unnamed, unlike the infamous Lafitte's Landing over at Disneyland. In addition, riders now enter the boats on both sides of the load area, as opposed to Disneyland where you enter and exit in the same spot, meaning that you can only get in through one side. 
In actuality, pretty much nothing in the load areas are the same, including the very first scene of the ride itself, or the Blue Bayou, where you see stuff like the Firefly effect and Old Man in the rocking chair, which is missing entirely from the Florida version. Similarly, it also doesn't have the Blue Bayou restaurant next to the attraction either, that overlooks that first scene. That old portion was switched out with a quick view of the ocean and a ship out in the distance. Really groundbreaking stuff, I know. Alright, now that we got the ride going, we'll tackle some of the bigger changes. And starting us off is the biggest one of all. That being the fact that the Magic Kingdom's version is missing almost the entirety of the grotto, or cave scene, from Disneyland. Which means stuff like the drinking skeletons, the captain's quarters, and the skeleton sitting on a pile of treasure aren't in it at all. Keep in mind, there is a much smaller version of the grotto in Florida, but the only similarities it has with California is stuff like the dead pirates on the beach and the skeleton on a crashed ship. Everything else is missing. One of the reasons Florida got such a condensed version of this first part of the ride was because of the differences in how they were constructed. If you remember from the History Of video for Pirates, I talked about how the attraction's original concept was an underground wax museum. And while that concept never actually became a reality, they did begin construction on it, by digging out a basement underneath the square itself. They of course later decided that they wanted an actual ride, and subsequently made the show building to house a majority of it. But they also ended up using the pre-dug basement as well, and that same basement is the first part of the grotto that you land in after seeing the talking skull and going down the first drop. It's also why you don't really see anything until the second drop that takes you out of that basement and into the main show building, where all the skeletons are. Since the Magic Kingdom didn't have that basement, they were already somewhat limited, but the real reason we saw so much less of that first part was because it was left out intentionally. You see, since the upcoming Western River Expedition was also being designed by Mark Davis, there was a lot of interest in moving some of the original scene ideas and gags from Disneyland's Pirates into that ride, just with some new Western theming. However, when they were suddenly forced to make another Pirates in the same park as their River Expedition, they opted not to include certain elements from the original ride that they were planning to have in the new attraction. Of course, this whole plan went belly up as soon as the Western River Expedition concept was abandoned a few years later, meaning that the new Pirates was now essentially half the duration of the original for no reason at all. If you'd like a bit more info on that attraction and what exactly happened to it, I'd recommend checking out the Yesworld video on it, because there really isn't anything else to say about it for this video. After navigating the grotto, you go down the first and only drop in this version, and find yourself in the middle of a battle between a pirate ship and the fort that you just came out of. And while the same scene can be found at Disneyland, this version is missing a couple of animatronics, those being the Spanish soldiers on top of the fort that'll pop out and exchange some dialogue with the pirates. One of the main reasons it's speculated that Florida doesn't have the soldiers was because they weren't originally intended to be in either of the rides, and only ended up at the Disneyland version after those same animatronics were removed from Epcot's World of Motion, which closed down in 1996. And even though it's never actually been confirmed, uh, to my knowledge at least, it does seem very likely. It would explain why they can be seen in that version and can only be heard at Disney World. For the most part, the rest of the ride is exactly the same as the Disneyland version. Pretty much all of the individual scenes were left untouched. The track layout, animatronic placement, and set design were essentially copied and pasted from the original. The only big deviation that part of the ride saw was a completely new final scene, where you would originally see a group of drunk pirates all firing off their guns at a few crates of explosives, you now instead see a couple pirates looting the town's stockpile of treasure. Once again, this was another one of Mark Davis's new concepts that he made to set the Florida version apart from the one in California. After that, you turn a corner and end up at the ride's unloading area, which, like I said earlier, isn't back at the beginning of the ride like it is at Disneyland. Because of that, the Magic Kingdom's Pirates also doesn't have that little bit at the end, where you loop around past the queue and see the talking bird. Interestingly enough, the Magic Kingdom actually got its own bird when it was first unveiled. Initially, the parrot could be seen after you got off the ride and took the moving ramp back up to the rest of the park. However, since that parrot did also talk, a lot of riders would often hang out around that area to hear him and bottleneck the ride's exit. After a few years, the bird was later moved outside the attraction, where he became better known as the Barker Bird, who would occasionally sing along with the Pirate's Life theme song and usher riders into the attraction. Unfortunately, he was later removed altogether and relocated to the World of Disney store at Downtown Disney in 2006. Speaking of the exterior, I should note that it's also seen a few changes over the years as well. The first being the slight relocation of its entrance. 
Originally, you would enter into the queue on the left side of the building, which was facing the rest of Adventureland. It wasn't until the later development of Frontierland, when foot traffic was now coming from both sides, that the entrance was moved to the middle, where it still is today. Since then, the old entrance side has pretty much become a parking lot for scooters and strollers, as well as doubling as the ride's handicapped entrance whenever that's needed. On top of that, the original Pirates of the Caribbean logo that used to greet you at the entrance was also removed and replaced by the big sail that now displays the logo from the movie series. And this, of course, brings us to the 2006 refurb, which added a few characters from the films. Much like Disneyland, it put all the same characters in all the same places. Really, the only difference there was when it came to the new treasure room. Since the Magic Kingdom attraction already had it, they didn't need to add a new one like they did in California. They just needed to add the Jack animatronic to it. Prior to that big overhaul, there were also a few smaller changes in the years before that, like when the chase scene was first altered in 1997. While Disneyland originally changed theirs to have the whole pirates chasing food thing instead of them chasing women, the Magic Kingdom skipped that iteration altogether and instead had the pirates making off with various loot from the town while the women chased them, and that concept was later implemented at Disneyland. As for the pooped pirate who also appears in that scene, he was changed as well, but instead of becoming the gluttonous pirate like he did at Disneyland, he was now just looking at a map for some treasure. However, both scenes and both rides were eventually changed to be exactly the same in 2006. Now the pooped pirate is busy talking about his map to the town's treasure, while Jack, who's hiding in a barrel behind him, looks over his shoulder at it. The 2006 refurb also brought one of the more infamous changes to the Magic Kingdom's version, that being the removal of the talking skull you would see before going down the drop, one of the few original grotto elements that managed to make its way over from Disneyland. It's still not entirely known why exactly the skull was removed. For a while, people thought it had something to do with them needing some space for the Davy Jones fog projection, but I'm not sure I buy that since those two effects take place at opposite ends of the cave. Either way, the skull was actually brought back in 2017, and now on top of saying some lines of dialogue, it also takes the on-ride photo, which I guess would be kind of cool if everyone knew that was the direction they were supposed to be looking in. While we're talking about the grotto, I also want to mention a minor update that part of the ride saw in 2012, when they added mermaids to it. Now, mermaids is in quotation marks there because what they actually ended up adding were a few projections in the water, which often happen so quickly they'd usually go unnoticed. But alongside that, they also added a new mermaid skeleton on the beach, which actually did look pretty cool and fit well with the rest of the scene. However, all those elements were removed a few years later for some reason. Finally, the Magic Kingdom also changed up their auction scene in 2018 as well, switching out the original redhead animatronic with the new red character, who's now auctioning off some of the town's pillaged goods alongside the pirates. Despite having what most people would consider an inferior ride experience when compared to the Disneyland attraction, I still think there are a few positive aspects about the Magic Kingdom version. Stuff like the couple of different scenes and especially the new queue really give the attraction its own twist on the storyline and make it a lot more unique than most people might think. And while this version doesn't have all the added history of its Disneyland counterpart, I still think its backstory is interesting enough and worth preserving. For you. Where is it? Oh, my here it is. The grand prize. It's an actual stuffed Caribbean parrot. Right oh, thanks. Yeah, you will stable that to your shoulder a little later. It'll be loads of fun.